This is a Friday Shoes production. This is lesson 1-10 in the book on page 70. The target is I can solve multiplication and division equations. Well, if you remember, not too long ago, we talked about adding and subtracting equations. And I stated that adding and subtracting are inverse operations. Well, same here with multiplication and division. Those are inverse operations as well, which means they undo each other. And just like the adding property and subtracting property of equality, if you multiply or divide both sides by the same number, everything remains equal. Both sides are equal. The one thing about the division is you cannot divide by zero. So you'll see, if I'll read it to you. If you divide each side of an equation by the same non-zero number, the two sides remain equal. Non-zero meaning any number but zero. So you can't divide by zero. If you've tried that, you'll notice it gives you an error message. And I just noticed that they didn't even have a fraction bar there. They should. That's a division or a fraction bar. Let's see, see this in operation here. Let's do this multiplication equation. 150, we have to solve this. 150 times something equals 675. They're calling it H. Well, what they did was they took some number H, multiplied it by 150, and they're saying that that equals 675. To solve this problem, we have to do the inverse operation. We have to undo what they did. So we have to divide by 150. It's kind of like a map I'm drawing over here. If you go south to get someplace, you go north to get back home. In this case, they are multiplied by 150, so we have to divide by 150 to get back to what H would be. So let's follow what they do. First off, we write the equation. We then draw our train tracks, keep everything nice and organized. Then we do our one operation where we divide by 150 on both sides. That's going to undo the multiplication. And if you notice, 150 is standing over 150. Well, 150 divided by 150 is 1. So notice what they have here. They have 1H equals 4.5. 675 divided by 150 is 4.5. But 1H, that's the same as like 1 times 8 or 1 times 9 or 1 times 10. Let's just equal the number after the 1. It's called the identity property, which means it actually is just H on the left side. H equals 4.5. There's the answer. How about you give a shot at a couple of these? Come on back. There's three of them. See if you have the right answer. Solve each equation, check your solution. All right. They have 8 times something equals 72. Well, they took the something, which we call x. They multiplied it by 8, and they said it equals 72. All right. Well, how do I undo multiplying by 8? Well, I divide by 8. So that's what I'm going to do. After I draw my train tracks, I'm going to divide both sides by 8. The 8 over 8 cancels to 1. 1x one is x, and that is equal to... Whatever 72 divided by 8 is, which is 9. There it is. Is that correct? Let's check it. Now, they say they want us to check it, so I'm going to plug it back in for the x. This 9 is going in right here. 8 times x, which is 8 times 9, is that equal 72? Sure is. Star that for yourself. Let's take a look at the second one. They have n. They're multiplying it by negative 4 on the left side, and that's supposedly equal to 28. So they took n, they multiplied it by negative 4, and that equals 28. Well, how do we do the inverse operation? Or how do we solve? We'll do the inverse operation. Well, that's going to be dividing by negative 4. This is what we're going to have to do to get back to n. So let's try our train tracks and then do our one operation. Divide by negative 4. When we do that, our negative 4 divided by negative 4 cancels down to 1, or reduces down to 1, and we actually just have n, 1n. 28 divided by negative 4. Hmm, don't get confused. A negative and a positive make a negative. That's n is equal to negative 7. Is it true? Well, negative 4 times negative 7. Is that 28? It sure is. Two negatives make a positive when you multiply. How about this? Negative 12 is equal to negative 6k. Ooh, yay, they're trying to scare you. Put it over on the right side. That doesn't do anything. Just talk about the k. What happened to it? Well, it's being multiplied by negative 6. And then they say it equals negative 12. Well, all we're going to do is undo that. We're going to divide by negative 6. That's our inverse operation. So draw our train tracks. Both sides get divided by negative 6. Negative 6 over negative 6 cancels down to 1. So we have 1k is equal to whatever this is. Negative 12 divided by negative 6 is 2. 
Is that true? Let's find out. Negative 12, is that equal to negative 6 times negative 2? Or excuse me, positive 2. And it sure is. It checks. Let's look at some division. How do we handle division? Very similar to the multiplication. Notice the first problem they have here. A all over negative 3 equals negative 7. That really is the same problem as A divided by negative 3 is equal to negative 7. But this is how they show it with that fraction bar in there. So they took A, they divided it by negative 3, and they said that equaled negative 7. How do we undo it? We do the inverse operation. So we're going to multiply by negative 3. This is what we're going to do. All right, let's take a look. So they say rewrite the problem. Okay, draw your train tracks down. Keep your equal signs lined up. Then let's do our one operation, which is the inverse of dividing by negative 3, and that is multiplying by negative 3. So they multiply both sides by negative 3. When you multiply both sides by negative 3, and you had to divide by negative 3, they cancel each other out. They undo each other, leaving the A left. So there you go. You have A on the left side. And on the right side, you have negative 7 times negative 3, which is 21. How about you try three of these? Come on back, see how you do. All right, solve each equation. Well, what did they do to y? They took y, they divided it by negative 4, and then they said that equaled negative 8. The inverse of dividing by negative 4, multiplying by negative 4. So that's what we're going to do. Try our train tracks. I'm going to rewrite the math problem so I can show all the work on it. And then I'm going to multi or by, excuse me, multiply by negative 4 on both sides. Remember, you got to do the both sides. They will cancel out to 1, and you'll let, end up with y is equal to negative 8 times negative 4, which is 32. Check your work on that. You can plug 32 right back into the math problem. 32 divided by negative 4 is negative 8. Yay, you got it. Next one. What did they do to m? They took m, they divided it by 5. That's how they show division, remember, with the fraction bar. And they said it equaled negative 9. Well, let's do the inverse operation to undo what they did to get back to what just m is by itself. Also call that isolating the variable, if you remember from a few days back. All right, so let's draw our train tracks. I'm going to rewrite the math problem again, just so it doesn't get messy. And then I'm going to do the inverse operation, which is multiply by 5 on both sides. Multiply by 5, multiply by 5. There it is. And when I multiply by 5, the division by 5 gets canceled out down to 1. And we have m is equal to, what's negative 9 times 5? That's negative 45. A negative and a positive multiplied give you a negative. Does that work? Well, is negative 45 divided by 5 equal to negative 9? Sure is. Done. Last one, 30 is equal to b divided by negative 2. So they took b. They divided it by negative 2. They got 30. Well, we've got to do the inverse operation to get back to b. So the inverse operation would be multiply by negative 2. All right, draw our train tracks. Save ourselves some space by multiplying both sides by negative 2. I'm not going to rewrite the problem this time. So I'm going to multiply both sides by negative 2. When we multiply both sides by negative 2, here's what we get. On this side, we have negative 60. On the other side, the negative 2 multiplied by the division of negative 2 cancels out. We're left with b. There's the answer. b is equal to negative 60. You can flip it around. That's the reflexive property. And it's b is equal to negative 60. Plug it into the original problem. Is negative 60 divided by negative 2 equal to 30? Sure is. All right. How about a real-world example? It says here, an adult lizard is about five times as long as a hatchling. If an adult lizard is 11 centimeters long, about how long is a hatchling? All right. This one's not too tough. If you remember from a previous lesson, we talking about taking word problems and turning them into math problems. You can see them doing that here. They've highlighted everything for you, so that's kind of nice. So we, what we would do is take the adult length, which they tell us here is 11, and we would translate it literally. Remember, is was equal sign when I talked in class. Then five times, five times. And then the hatchling length, 
Well, that's what we're going to call our variable, since that's what we're looking for, and that's g. So they have 11 equals 5 times g. And then we go ahead and solve that problem. Notice how they write it as 5g right here instead of 5 dot g. Same thing. All right, so they actually take that problem, work it all the way through by dividing by 5, because that's the inverse operation of multiplying by 5. And they're telling you that the lizard hatchling is about 2.2 centimeters. That's what 11 divided by 5 is. How about you try one on your own here? Remember, this is a skill. We talked about that in class. Remember me balancing the, the meter stick in my hand? Take some practice. All right. It says the recorded amount of precipitation is one-tenth the amount of fallen snow. If, in, if Redfield, New York, received 13.6 inches of precipitation in one week, how many inches of snow fell? I like that. How many inches of snow fell? Right here, I know we're looking for how many inches of snow fell. So I'm going to just use S as um, inches of snow. Excuse me. I'm going to write down inches of snow. That's the thing we're looking for. I like when they have a question and we can label it quickly. Now, we also have some other information. And what, what I notice is, and this is, again, this is a skill. When you start to do many of these, you'll start to notice it yourself. It says the recorded amount of precipitation. Precipitation is one-tenth. One-tenth would be one-tenth, or divide by ten. You can do it that way, too. One-tenth, the amount of fallen snow. They then give you this information right here. See this precipitation? They tell you there's 13.6 inches of precipitation. So the red is the actual math problem. They throw a number in there, two numbers, so that helps you get the final answer here. So let's do that. Looking in at the red right here, I'm starting here. The precipitation, which is 13.6 inches, is, remember is, we talked about that in class, is one-tenth, one-tenth. Now, there's several ways you can do this, and I kind of highlighted it up here. One-tenth that of the amount of the fallen snow. Now, the fallen snow, do we know what that is? No. That's the inches of snow falling right there. I should probably put fallen right here. So let's label that with our S. So one-tenth of the fallen snow of is multiplication in math. Sometimes it works where you can directly uh, translate it right into the math. Sometimes it's a little bit more difficult. They word it differently. So here it is. There's the math problem. Now you could write it like, and I mo Mention it up there. Instead of one tenth, you can just divide by ten. This might be a little bit easier to see. You take the snow, you divide by the snowfall, and you divide by ten. You get how much, how many inches of rain that is. So let's take and solve this problem here. I'll do it over on the side. Thirteen point six equals s divided by ten. Well, step one: draw our train tracks. Step two: undo what they've done to s. What they do to S, they divided by 10. See that divide by 10? Well, we want to undo that. We do the inverse operation. Let's multiply by 10. And then when we do that on both sides, these 10s will cancel. You'll end up with S is equal to 136. When you multiply by 10, you move the decimal over one spot to the right. There it is. So the snowfall was 136 inches. Don't forget, you can always rewatch this video. You can read the examples in the book again. They have more explanations there. You could also watch some of the personal tutor videos. I don't know if anybody's actually gone there to take a look at them. They do have some really nice online uh, tutor videos you can use. And as always, it's been a Friday Shoes production.